Father, we bless your name. Hallelujah. You are the King, you are the Lord, you are in charge, Jehovah. The giver of life. The one who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever think of, imagine or even ask for. This morning, Heavenly Father, we surrender to you completely. You are God who is able to do more than we can ever imagine. More than we can ever think of. And we want to thank you, O God, this that you are the faithful God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who is in charge. May your kingdom come, O God. May your will be done this morning. Be glorified, O God, in all the earth. Manifest your power, O God. Manifest your glory. Speak to us, King of Kings. Oh, yes. Speak to us. Touch us, Jehovah. Oh, Jehovah. May we know of your presence, our God. May we know that you are here, Jehovah. May we know that the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the mighty Savior, is able to save. Oh, he's able to do more than we can ever think of. Father, we surrender to you. We give it all to you this morning. We are yours, O God. Move as you will. Move as you will, O God. Do what you want, Jehovah. Yes, O God. Oh, Jehovah. How great is thy faithfulness. How amazing are your ways, O God. Father, we thank you. Yes, O God. Yes, O God. Just enjoy the sweet presence of the Lord this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. 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 Yes, Lord. You are holy, you are mighty, you are powerful, our God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, right to him. Great I am, King of Kings. Oh, you are amazing. Hallelujah. You are amazing, our God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord of Lords, King of Kings. We love you, Jehovah. We love you, King of Kings. We love you, King of Kings. Great I am, Lord of Lords. You are special, O oh God. You are wonderful, King of Kings. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Come on, let's give God some praise this morning. Come on, glorify Him. He's faithful. Faithful God. Faithful God. He is. Come on, let's give him some glory this morning. He's, he is here. He's here. Thank you, guys. The Lord bless you. He is here. He's an amazing God. King of kings, Lord of lords. Able to do more than we can ever think of. More than we can ever imagine. This morning, I'm talking on a topic that says betrayal. 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 Betrayal, a blessing in disguise. So the title of the sermon is Betrayal. Bless, a blessing in disguise. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to read our Bibles. Uh, from... The book of John, uh, chapter 13, we will read some verses there, from verse 18, up to verse 32, but I'll skip some verses in between. Blessing, in disguise. Are you there? Jesus said, I'm not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen. But this is to fulfill this passage of scripture. He who shared my bread has turned against me. I'm telling you now that before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I said I am. And then from verse 21, after he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified. Very truly I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back up against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I've dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas. 
The son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, what you are about to do, do quickly. As soon as, uh, verse 30, from verse 30 now, as soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out. And it was night. Say to your neighbor, it was night. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified with him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. You see, God has brought us into this world so that we can live full lives. He wants the very best for us. In John 10, 10, Jesus says, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and life more abundantly. So Jesus brought us into this world to have an abundant life. But we have a thief who wants to kill, to destroy. Our enemy is spiritual. But he uses humans who agrees with his agenda. He uses humans to inflict pain on us. But God, who is always, is able to work out the good out of anything that comes our way. For in all things, he works for our good. Hallelujah. Amen. Many times when uh, the devil comes to you through a human being, you may ask yourself, why me? What have I done? Is everything right with me? But I wanted to show you something about the betrayer. The betrayer does not depend on you. The betrayer is a betrayer because they are betrayers. It just happens that they are now focused on you. If it wasn't you, it would be somebody else. Because they carry that with themselves. It's something that is upon them. When you look at Judas, for example, you may ask yourself, but what came upon him on that day? The Bible says Satan entered him. But does, does, does he just come in anyhow? Many times when you look at a betrayer, you can see that they have a track record. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil doesn't just make you do it. You would have been giving him, you know, some space over a period of time. And at the right time, he will come in, take his rightful place to deliver his last blow. Hallelujah. Amen. When you look at a betrayer, you will realize that there is something wrong within them. There are some unresolved issues within them. There are some identity issues between them. Some insecurity that needs to be settled. That is why they are trying to get mileage by doing something uh, that will bring them a name. Exhibit number one. Uh, Verse 28. Judas. Judas. 
When you read about Judas in John chapter 12, before he betrayed Jesus, chapter 12 from verse 1 to 8, the Bible says, six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany. Where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Who was being honored? Jesus. The man of God was being honored with a dinner. They had a special party for him. It was his special day. Hallelujah. Amen. Martha served. What? No, served. Was serving. While Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. So it was a beautiful day where Jesus was honored with an evening meal. It was his day. And so Martha, or, or is it Mary? Mary. Mary, Mary decided to do this noble thing. But one of his disciples, guess who it is? Judas. Judas. Judas Iscariot, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. You see the heart of a betrayer. The betrayer always has a different eye from everyone else. When others are celebrating, honoring another one, they are looking with a different eye. What I was he looking with? This is what he says. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? Now, this is a very good argument, isn't it? I mean, it's very important for us to take care of the poor. Hallelujah. Amen. It's very, very important. But it's, is it also important to honor those who deserve to be honored? Hallelujah. Amen. So he says, why was it not given to the pure? The Bible says it was worth a year's wages. Imagine taking your 12 month salary and pouring it on the feet of the man of God. Lazarus was very right. This was a waste. I mean, sorry, Judas. Judas was very right. Judas was very right. From the economy, uh, economic perspective, it How doesn't make make sense. Sense. How do you take 12 months salary and pour it just like that? Now listen to what the Bible says. He did not say this because he cared about the poor. But because he was a thief. He was a thief. Now we are talking about one of the apostles here. One of the twelve. He has seen everything Jesus does. Even this Lazarus that they are with. 
Jesus had told them Lazarus is sleeping. And they said, if he's sleeping, he's good. He will come. And then he told them, no, he's dead. When Jesus said, Lazarus, come out, he was there. Judas was there. Judas was there. Judas he was not missing in action. Judas slept with Jesus. Judas they woke up together. They prayed together. They ate together. Judas. Judas see you. But he has a different perspective on it. Why? Because in his heart, he is a thief. His concern for the poor is not a concern for the poor. His concern for the poor is to have some form of a reason to say this is not fair. You can't do this for another man. What is so special about him? That he will take 12 months salary and pour it on him. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the betrayer. And what did Jesus say? The Bible says, He was a thief, a keeper of the money bag. He used to help himself to what was put into it. They say that God helps those who help him, himself. He used to help himself on what was put there. Now, this is how Jesus responds. He, he says, says leave her alone. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. In other words, this woman is doing something spiritual. She is connected to God and she knows what should be done at this time. But you, because of your flesh, you are opposing the times of God because in your heart you are a betrayer. You are a thief. You are dishonest. You are with us, but you are not of us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are talking about the 12 disciples. The inner circle. The people who know everything that is happening. Jesus says, leave her alone. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. And then Jesus says something that sounds like it's not too nice or polite to say. You will always have the poor among you. But you will not always have me. Me na kalo na kuto la linsele na linna. Gopa. Straight talk. This is two thousand years ago. Mo kiri ni wakatiri kete peri. Do we have the poor among us? Ah, karena ba huma ni kumpi. It seems we are going to have the poor until Jesus comes. Hole ba kaya kete ba huma ni kiba tan na teuri kita la Jesuat. Sometimes you need to understand. The blessing of the moment. And take advantage of it. So you can see here that clearly Judas had a different way of thinking. These are the people who are always complaining about any benefits that are given to those who are working in the house of the Lord. They sound spiritual. They are taking care of the poor. They are thinking about the poor. But that is not the truth from their hearts. They actually just hate the Savior. These are the people who have turned their hearts to the devil. And they are usually there. 
in your inner circle. They are there at your workplace. They are there. Motswana o rile meno masweu. Eh Motswana says not all that glitters. Abola athe. It's gold. Be 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 aware of a smile. Meno masweu abola athe. There are crocodile tears. Hallelujah. Amen. Not only Jesus. Asi Jesu hela. Joseph also had his own brothers. He had a dream. When you go to Genesis chapter 37, verse 5, uh, verse 8 and verse 11, the Bible says Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers. And they hated him all the more. His brothers said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Verse 11 says, His brothers were jealous of him. But his father kept the matter in his mind. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, many times these betrayers are people who want the attention that you have. They see you as just one of them, and so what is so special about you? What's the big deal about you? And sadly, as they continue harboring these thoughts, they begin to think of ways of eliminating you. If they are into which doctors they will go to each doctor and say eliminate if it is those who can poison your food they will put poison in your food they want what you have Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Judas wanted Jesus dead. Judas si ona abata hore morena Jesu Kristo abasule. Look at Joseph's brothers. Bona bara Josepha. They were their hearts were evil. Di pelotsa bona ya be ile tsa di busula. Why? Ka gore competition. Ele khaisana. They thought because they were older they deserved better. Bana ba ka nya gore ka gore ne le bo mogolo e bana ba tshwanna ke tsone se se mo le mogo ga e. Now let me talk about the blessing of a betrayer. Ma ke buya ka tsego ha tseo ya ya borekisi. You see without them knowing it. Ba sa itse. The betrayer actually pushes you to your destiny. E ne yo go rekisanya o ka ntse o go khurumeletsa ko bo leng ja ga go botshwanetseng go atei. Let me say this again. Ma ke buya se ga ape. You see many times you look at the betrayers and we are angry at what they are doing. Na ko e nngwe re lebella mo rekisi we do not understand how can they do this. But if you look throughout the Bible and what betrayers did, they pushed those they wanted to betray closer to their destiny. The betrayer is the catalyst that you need to reach where you are going fast. Without them knowing, betrayers are usually actually serving you. In their hatred of you, they are pushing you closer and closer to where you should be. In Genesis chapter 50, verse 18 to 21, Joseph's brothers come and they throw themselves in front of him. And they say, we are your slaves. Oh, Luna, you, you are my slaves. You who threw me in a pit. They, throw, they are bowing before him. According to the dream that uh, Joseph saw many, many years ago. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. I am, am I in the place of God? 
And that's that's what you must understand when you are betrayed. So, you are not in the place of God. Don't execute what God should execute. Now, this is these are powerful words. Listen to this. He says, "You intended to harm me." Joseph is not trying to sugarcoat it or anything. No. No, you wanted to harm me. That is the truth. You intended it for evil. But he says, but God intended it for good. To accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many lives. Now, think about it. How else would Joseph have reached Egypt? Hallelujah. Amen. In all things, God works all things together for your good. Stop being bitter that you are betrayed. Find out from your father. Father, what are you doing? Hallelujah. Amen. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And then he says, so then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. You see, Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him. After Judas took the bread, Jesus turns to him and he says, What you are about to do, Judas, do it quickly. Wow. You know, this guy is going to betray you. And you are saying, do it quickly. You're wasting my time. Please do it quickly. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus was not afraid of betrayal. Because he knew the role of betrayal in his purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. This you can see in John 13, verse 30 to 32. Is it painful to be betrayed? It is. Oh, it's very painful. Look at how Joseph suffered because of his own brothers. Look at how Jesus suffered because of his own disciples. Somebody, you know, Judas was a nobody. Most of the disciples had no name. Jesus picked the outcasts of the society. And they became famous. People started, uh, you know, following them. They had maybe um, hundred followers on Facebook. Now they have exceeded five hundred thousand. They are now big. Why? Because they are with cheese. You know, people like to be associated with the big man. And if you associate with somebody who associates, you will always say, ah, you know that guy who stands next to Jesus on the th that third side, that one. Actually, here is his WhatsApp number. I've been talking to him this morning. I was talking to him. Hallelujah. Mm. So people like this association with somebody great. You remember the message, Jesus is not your homeboy. When you associate with somebody great, you feel big. That's why when we, we are with some celebrity, we take selfies and throw on Facebook quickly. And the comments will go, yeah, hey, you, you are big nowadays. You are moving with the big guys, eh? And in your humility, you are like, hey, you are like, 
What can I say? When life is good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Judah was up there. He was taken from nothing to somebody by Jesus. Now he is betraying Jesus. Now I want you to understand something. A betrayer will always get what they deserve. Because there is a point where the betrayer will suffer. For God cannot be mocked. Everyone will reap what they have sown. That is the truth. That is why you should never interfere in the justice of God. When it comes to uh, kingdom issues, God's justice will always prevail. They may scheme against you, bring false evidence against you, create a huge story that adds up, seems to add up. But let me tell you, the God of heaven knows everything, sees everything. He will never be deceived. You may deceive the courts of the land, but you will not deceive the courts of heaven. So the betrayer will suffer ultimately for their betrayer. In Genesis chapter 50 from verse 15 to 18, we see there that Joseph's brothers when their father died their conscience started hitting them hard. In verse 15 they say what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? The betrayer is always worried about their security. They don't enjoy life because they know they have done something wrong. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, this message that I'm preaching is for both the betrayed and the betrayers. If you are a betrayer here, I want you to understand that the justice of God will finally catch up with you. If you have been betrayed or you are going to be betrayed, I want you to know that the justice of God will fight for you. Hallelujah. Amen. So they are always worried about their security because they know they have done wrong. You suffer for your sins. So a betrayer will always get what they deserve. Usually they live a life of torment. Tormented usually not by anyone else but by themselves because they know what they have done. They suffer sleepless nights. High blood pressure. Migraines because they have no peace within themselves. They can't even enjoy the money they got from their betrayer. Look at Judas in Matthew 27. From verse, ten, verse 3. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse. He was seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and the elders. So he thought he was making a quick buck. I found out that this 30 uh, pieces of silver will be equivalent to about 6,000 pula today. 
And so he re- six, about six hundred dollars, so six thousand pula. So he returns this money. Jano, Judas seo busa madi. Who does he return the money to? Wa busa sa koko mang. The chief priests. Koko mo priesto mo tona. Are these church people? Ase ba tuwa kereke. The bishops. Eh, ke ba di koro zadi tona. And the elders. Le ba kolo ani. In the New Testament, when they talk about elders, they are talking about the pastors, the bishops, they were called elders. And he says, I have sinned. Who saying that? Judas. Judas. I have sinned, he said. I have betrayed innocent blood. Would you are king? What is eating him? His conscience. And listen to what, what the chief priests are saying. They got what they wanted. This is what they are saying to you. What is that to us? That's your responsibility. Let me tell you, betrayer. There is a day where you are going to be on your own. And those who used you to climb up to betray the son of man will say to you, what is that to us? It's your own sin. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Now you see that all of this was happening in the church. Where it's supposed to be safe. The church, the, the money is coming out of the church. Which bought Jesus. Uh, Judas is throwing it back into the church. If it can happen in the church, you at your workplace, what do you think? The Bible says, be humble like doves, but wise like serpents. You know, some, some of you are just doves. You are not balanced. You are just doves. People can do anything to you. You are just a daff. The Bible says, you must have both. The snake is very clever. Uh, It can hide behind this speaker. Waiting for me to come close. So that it strikes. Hallelujah. Amen. It can camouflage. It can move silently without you knowing that it's there. It can even sleep with you in your own bed. A snake. No. The Bible says be like a serpent. But don't just be like a serpent. Mix it with the dove inside. Hallelujah. Amen. The problem with us is that with some creatures are serpentine. Uh, That's all. Serpents. Serpent. They are serpentine. They will take God. your money and say they will give you this week and then they are gone. Then they block you. And then they change their names. <laughs> we know that your CDs, your, your books are gone, your CDs are gone, cassette your cassettes are gone. How much am I going to Rika? Rika, you ask your brother, he like a hoodoo. Hey, I moved. I <laughs> moved. <laughs> oh, God help us. Hallelujah. Amen. And some of you are just doves. Too much. Now you are too sleepy. A Christian must not be too sleepy. People just people will take your money and lie to you. Do you know that Jesus is both the Lamb of God and the Lion of the tribe of Judah? In one. Hallelujah. Amen. When it is time for the lion to roar, it will roar. When he came, he came as a lamb. 
to be slaughtered, killed for us. He's coming back as a lion riding on a white horse one day. He's not coming to laugh. There's a judgment. He will be coming here for judgment. If you are out, forget it, it's gone. This is the time while he's still the lamb. Hallelujah. Amen. So he threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. Who said Judas must hang himself? Who did say? It's his conscience. He couldn't live with himself. So betrayers will struggle to live with themselves. They will struggle to enjoy the benefits of their betrayal. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor, don't be the betrayer. <laughs> How do you respond to betrayers? Both Joseph and Jesus forgave their betrayers. They understood very clearly the justice of God. Jesus on the cross, he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. Joseph says, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And he promises to provide for their needs. He speaks kindly to them. Do you know that Joseph in the Old Testament was a type of Jesus in the New Testament? Hallelujah. Amen. Both of them were betrayed by those who were close to them. They suffered because people who were closest to them betrayed them. And both of them saved many people. Joseph saved many people from famine. He gave them life through food. Not only the Egyptians, but many countries around Egypt. That famine was going to kill everyone, but Joseph was there. And Jesus... To save us from our sins. You see, the reason why you are attracting betrayers around you is because they are afraid that within you there is a potential to give life to many others. And because the devil comes to still kill and destroy, he hates anyone who takes the position of Jesus of giving life and living life in abundance. That is why you have betrayers around you. Unfortunately, if you are a life giver, you will always have them around you. That's why God wants you to understand this. Otherwise, you will fight unnecessary battles and waste your time. You waste your money at the courts. You waste your money in hearings that have got no tail and no head. Mm -hmm. That is the English word I was using. No tail or head. Hallelujah. Amen. Wasting your time instead of focusing on the mandate that God has for you. When Jesus was on trial, there were times where they were asking, asking him questions that did not matter. And he didn't, he didn't respond. And when he did not respond, Pilate even said, 
Don't you know that I have the power to set you free or to make sure that you die? O marare tota ha sa ra bana ha bitse gore ke khona gore ke go golle kgotsa ke re bo bola iwe. What did Jesus say? Jesus Christ do not. You would not have that power. Unless it was given to you. Go nta ga we ne tswe ke we ne my father. We ne tswe ke ntate. Did Jesus have to defend himself? I just want to talk about it. He had said it himself the hour has come. O na sa tsa boletse gore na go e go rogile. There are some battles that you don't need to waste your time with. But you need to know who you are. You need to know what battles you must fight and which ones you must fight. Otherwise you are going to waste your strength on things that do not matter. When you are betrayed, you will lose some benefits. Yes. Joseph lost Many years of his young life with his family. He lost his prime time. As a slave. But he understood deep down within that there was something greater that was ahead of him. You see, when dreams are from God, they will never stop. Whether you are in prison, whether you are falsely accused, the dreams will never stop. People will look at you and say, Kante, why do you keep on this track? If you are from Nigeria, they will say, why are you suffering yourself? Why are you suffering yourself so much? They don't know what God has placed inside of you. He has put something bigger in you. When you look at the future, you see that all of these trials are nothing. And you have a full understanding that God will use that as a catapult. Hallelujah. Amen. To your next destination. To your next destination. I want to encourage somebody this morning. God has given you dreams. But you have faced a lot of opposition. You have faced a lot of betrayal. Remember those dreams. Don't bury those dreams. There are a lot of things that God has told me that have not yet come to pass. Along the way, I get discouraged. You remember Elijah? After a great victory, huh? Killing of uh, more than 400 uh, prophets of Baal. And people started shouting, the Lord is God. The Lord, he is God. The Lord. Elijah was the hero. He thought that Israel will turn back to God and there will be a great revival. What happened? Jezebel. 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 Jezebel rose her voice Jezebel. 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 and said, I'm going to kill you. After such a, I mean, he killed how many prophets? But a woman. Ahab's wife, who was not even Israelite herself, says, I'm going to feed your body to the birds today. The man of God runs away. He runs far. And when he's tired, he sits down somewhere. And he says, God, God, how can you? Hallelujah. Glory. You will be discouraged. But remember what God has said. He doesn't lie. Child of God, he doesn't lie. He will never lie. And I want you to understand this. The justice of God will always prevail. No matter where false accusations come from, the God of heaven watches over the whole world. Trust him to take care of everything. Praise the 
reason why you come, let us all stand. Today I know I have spoken to some of you. This is your Rema word, your now word. You are going through some things right now. And today your eyes opened to see what is really happening around you. And because of the betrayal, because of all of the things that have not been going well, it seemed like the picture that you once saw of yourself was fading. God wants to make it ultra HD 4K today, very clear to you. King of kings and Lord of lords. We acknowledge your lordship over our lives and over the affairs of life. We are yours. We are your workmanship, oh God. We surrender completely to your ways. Help us to stop fighting for ourselves and cast all of our cares on you. All of our burdens on you. All of our issues on you. We don't want to go through this life with the knowledge that you care for us, O God. You care for us, O God. You do. Every little thing about our lives, man. may that be engraved within us. As as your children. As may we understand it fully in the name of Jesus Christ. We surrender to you and to your ways. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. May we dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May His face shine upon us. May He give us peace. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. You are blessed. Give him some praise. Hallelujah.